first-hand live streaming showcase. I'm your host, Chris Petrafka. We're back with episode seven or eight, I think. So we've been on a roll. Uh, we had Gene Caffeine on last Friday. If you're into the whole 70s punk scene in San Francisco in the Bay Area, you're going to want to watch that show because she's lived it, she's done it. If you think you're punk, you're not until you really meet Gene Caffeine. So tune in and check that out. We got all of these videos going up on uh, YouTube. Uh, today, we've got Nick with Buenos Diaz. Uh, we're going to post this a few days later, so we'll get this up on YouTube for you as well. If you're watching now, please like and share, because that is the currency that keeps this show going. And because of your likes and shares and the number of viewers, uh, they're tuning in each week and watching afterwards, we keep the show going. It's a group of volunteers, and we do it simply because we love Austin music. We love the hardworking musicians that are here um, doing their best um, to reach all of you. So... Today, I'm super excited. I'm thrilled to have Nick from Buenos Dias. And hey, with no further ado, let me introduce to you Nick. That's where I play the song, right? Yeah, you okay. got it, man. <laughs> so hard, so, so ready to be with you. If you joining us tonight yeah this is great it's cool to be here i've never done this before yeah yeah all right good and, and i don't really play acoustic guitar ever either. it's the first time i've seen you play acoustic so it's, it's really all weird right yeah now. things are weird so all of you are getting in the first time here i've seen <laughs> lots of weird stuff with it's nick a lot of weird things it's, awesome. <laughs> it's great right? it's very austin right now ever since that eclipse happened things have been weird <laughs> so why am i not surprised about just, that with you just keep going with it <laughs> no, no i feel like my hair is a little more slanted since the eclipse. Since the eclipse. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, for sure. Well, thanks for coming. And yeah. I usually start yeah. off with a, a fun or just goofy question because part of 
this show, as I was telling Nick before we got started, is that it was meant to be uh, approachable and fun and lighthearted. And so send in your questions online. And actually, the more ridiculous and weird the questions are, the better, because we're, we're dealing with Nick. So that will actually... I'm really serious. Yeah. Look, at me. Yes. look at the way I look. Yeah. Look at this guy. Um, but I do have a somber question for you. I know with uh, Harvey hitting recently and you being a Houstonian. Yep. Um, you know, can you talk a little bit about that? And sure. you have family there as well? Are they all safe? Mom's safe. Cousin's swimming. But he's safe. Mm -hmm. Aunt and uncle are safe and brother is safe. So that's all good. Um, mm -hmm. We've been joking. My mom and I have been joking. I mean, it is a very dire situation down there. So um, I think being lighthearted is, is part of getting through it. But my mm -hmm. mom lives in one of the oldest parts of Houston. Um, so we've been joking back and forth because my mom grew up going to Catholic school for 13 years. And I said, see, mom praying to those nuns with those nuns for 13 years. You landed on the modern day Noah's Ark. Because <laughs> her house is untouched, unflooded, wow. power, fresh water, everything. It's just, yeah. it's a miracle, it really is. Yeah, there's got to be a small percentage of folks that yeah. are surviving that. Exactly. So, yeah, no, they're, they're good. Um, and then, uh, there is, uh, my cousin has is facing a little bit of, um, you know, some of the hurricane disaster. His house did flood, but they're safe. And, you know, whatever, you get through that stuff and you can get new things and whatnot. But the family's good. So Yeah, that, well, that's, that's what's important. important. Yeah. And, no, I mean, it's, it's really been cool. My, mo my mom, too. My mom is, um, a lot of friends have been checking in, um, literally around the world from Australia to Spain to France, yeah. from New York to San Francisco. And so I told my mom that yesterday and she was blown away. I said, look, mom, you're more famous than I am. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, she's, she's super, uh, appreciative that people have been asking so much. So that's good. That's great. She's a lucky lady. Yeah. She's a lucky lady on many accounts right now. Yeah, well, that's the thing about these sort of tragedies, right? At least your community comes out. You yeah, talk about, right? Everybody's for sure. in the corner. Yeah, and just watching like the feed and stuff on Facebook mm -hmm. and, and, and the news and whatnot, Houston's coming through like a champ, man. Just like yep. everybody volunteering, everyone, you know, um, the, just the convention center opening up. Just all these, everyone just chipping in to try to make it through it, you know, as quickly and as easy as possible. Yeah. Because it's not an easy thing. And I lived in New Orleans for seven years and I moved out the month before Katrina hit so I witnessed same thing like friends flooding and everything and then they bopped to Houston and, and Houston was one of the biggest mm. you know providers of relief to Katrina victims and now they're mm. they're going through it themselves which is really unfortunate but you know they'll make it yeah. through it yeah it's a, it's a tough town well and I saw tough people from Houston that's right Houston survivors are tough uh-huh yeah well, I saw at least Joel Osteen had they cleaned up the puddles in the church and they're finally gonna open that up yeah, for everybody better. God <laughs> Anyways, I don't, I don't, I know. that's whatever. Well, and it is nice to see everybody chipping in. I mean, there, I, yeah. I have saw today a lot of people from Austin and the surrounding areas of yeah. boats are like headed over there to help. Yeah, everything yeah. Out. And, it's and impressive. I got an email from the Texas Music Office today. You know, they're starting to put together yep. benefit and relief concerts and everything yep. to start raising money to help Houston and absolutely will be a part of that stuff, you know. That's right. So, um, yeah, yeah, Texas is coming through like a champ right now. Yeah. I'm, I'm proud to be from here and seeing, you know, how everybody's handling it. That's right. It's cool. And if you're online right now uh, watching, I know that uh, Claudia's posted on social uh, the list of the shows, all the benefit shows that are happening in the Austin area. She'll pop that up and just follow that link. <clears throat> and definitely over the next week, two weeks, please uh, attend one of those benefit shows. Yeah, it for makes sure. such a difference. It does. And then on a, uh, on a more serious note then, um, how, Trump was in town today. And so how did, uh, how, how the how uh, my meeting, meeting with, how did my meeting with Donald Trump go? <laughs> well, as soon as he walked in, I challenged him to an arm wrestling match and I beat him. <laughs> so he's on his way here to finish, you know, watch the last portion of this show. So he's on the way so I can really dig it into his brain. Then. That was his punishment. Too. Yeah. It's his punishment. He's got to hang out with some weird Austin yes. hippie musician people. Yeah. He so just, this, he needs it. This show is going to be huge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Big, totally biggest show ever you should we'll get photos we'll send them out later of all the people that are yeah. here at this show yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> it's completely full I don't want a photo with that guy <laughs> first uh, president I think that, that people are like I don't want a photo with that guy yeah, okay. yeah. Well, I, I told people it wasn't going to be lighthearted. so um, let me ask you then about the new album which came out yeah. in April, it was in April. Um, and yeah. so tell us about the new album how is it different from the other albums and mo most sure. importantly how to how do viewers get a copy of the album yeah um, the album is available on all digital outlets Spotify iTunes Amazon everywhere it's on YouTube um, and you can buy it obviously in like iTunes Music Bandcamp we have a page there so you know it is I mean just type in Buenos Dias and usually music is the thing that takes you right to it. So if you type that in, it brings up all of the online content mm -hmm. for um, finding that stuff. Um, but yeah, it's been getting great 
press and yeah. it's been well received I love that record I'm really proud of it we spent mm. like two years working on it here in Austin mm. with um, some, a great cast of guys Daniel McNeil was the producer engineer and he works with white denim and he, mm-hmm. he works in an all analog format and that's how we did it it's all tape there was no computer there was no nothing like that it was like it was 1962 um, mm. or 63 or 4 or whatever <laughs> um, and then uh, Jeff Olson who's a killer drummer in town works with freelancing around with tons of people as well um, Mike Sinclair another really really you know just beyond we call him the, we call him the wizard because mm. Mike can play I think nine instruments he plays wow. violin he plays keys he plays guitar he plays bass he plays trumpet trombone wow tambourine he sings <laughs> jeez um and I know he plays something else that I just probably never even heard of. How do I get him on the show? Why do I have this Yeah, guy? you, you, you got to right? get that guy on the show, actually. Yeah, he has his own solo project. It's called Pocket Sounds. You guys check that out. But Mike's, yeah, Mike's a genius. Great, all right. Um, we'll, get, we'll get Mike in here for sure. <laughs> he, he would totally do it. He's fun to talk to, too. Um, but this, and, and Brandon Taylor is my kind of regular go-to live bass player. And Mark Henney is also another uh, good good name drummer in town. So it's just a cast of really good friends, though. Like we just we just hung out and drank beers and coffee and maybe had a cigarette here and there, and then a record was done. Yeah, that was really how it went. And we just would go and work a little bit, hang out, work a little bit, hang out. Yeah. Um. So it was a really fun process too. And and I always like to say when I work in, in the studio, um, when we went in and you have all these great minds like those guys, I just said. There are no no's in this room. This is a yes room. This is a creative room. So, Mm -hmm. you know, we'll say yes to your idea. We'll try it. And if it just doesn't end up making it to the cut, it's just because collectively we'll decide that it wasn't the right direction to Mm -hmm. go. But there is not a a no doesn't exist when we're making a record. Okay. So that was really fun to work with those guys because they work great in that capacity too. You know, And and just really opens the door for the flow of creativity, um, which those guys have a chock full of. And, and listen to the album too you kind of got that feeling from it's got a fun vibe mm-hmm. to it it's just got one of those cool. like you want to listen it's kind of almost like that summer kind of like this cool. is just puts me in a good mood kind of nice. uh, kind of vibe to it I like which it. is good yeah it's good um, but yeah and so and it's different from the other record school one it's a full mm-hmm. length yeah. two uh, we really made it a point to record it as similar to how we are as a band live which is just a three piece so there's not a whole, there's no like, I think there's maybe one keyboard on there and that's it. Mm-hmm. Otherwise it's drums, bass, guitar, and singing. Mm-hmm. And, and, um, and the sonic space of just having three instruments, I feel like really made it sound bigger yeah. than, than anything I've done in the past. Mm-hmm. So um, that was fun. And, um, and well, and it's a full length, so it's the first full length that um, Buenos Dias, this project has done. Mm-hmm. And it's, the album is just self-titled. Buenos this is just self-titled. That's Buenos what I thought. Dias, yeah. yeah. And how do people get a copy of it? Um, well, so yeah, oh, wait, well, hard copy, uh, hard copies are also available at, at Cactus Music in Houston, Waterloo Records here in Austin. Um, they're on the, the cdbaby.com website for hard copies. People, uh, hard copies are dying. Yeah, yeah, but it's, if you, it's hard to say that because I grew up with CDs and, and tapes and things. But you're true fans, uh, you know, true fans still buy. Yeah, and then sure. they do, they do for sure, you know, and at live shows, of course, you know. Yeah. So. How do they get an autographed copy? Um, you have to invite me out for a beer. Oh, it's easy. Yeah, pretty easy. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or maybe I'll invite you out for a beer. <laughs> yeah. Just message me. We can we can work this out. It's cool. Anything to get you my CD. Yeah. Right? Just, just come come get a CD. Come say hi. I'm a nice guy. <laughs> nice. Um, and then you were on recently on Johnny's podcast. Yeah. Um, how did I get here? I did. Yeah, Johnny Gowdy. He's a he's a good old friend. Yeah. Um, actually, tonight also. Um, I met Johnny through another good friend in New York, Joseph King, um, who is a Texan, but mm. we met in Brooklyn when I lived in New York, and um, Joseph is here tonight. He's playing at the Bullstead. Oh, okay. So we're going to bop over there after all this and go hang out. Oh, nice. And, uh, okay. and so I'm pretty sure Johnny will be there too. But So that's how I met Johnny, which was nice, but that was years ago, um, mm. and Johnny was nice enough to invite me to come onto the show um, in April. Yeah, because that new record was was dropping. That's right. Yeah, well, the interview is great. Um, oh, and cool. I, I recommend those podcasts because you know, Johnny likes to go a little deeper and yeah. how did I get here, right? And talks about yeah. it. Yeah. And there's a couple of things that um, he mentioned, if you don't mind, if we might be retreading it for totally. you, but for some more viewers here, um, one thing he brought up, he brought up was genre, right? Which mm-hmm. which gets a little tricky because I come at it more from I'm not a musician. I'm I'm fit in the true fan. So a genre is helpful for me, sure. right? Because then I if I otherwise it's like going to order a beer and going, can I just get a beer? Right. <laughs> I kind of want to know like I want this type. 
Although in Europe that works, you can just say beer and they just go blonde or red. That's true. It's so, very to the point, you know. Yeah, what would they say if it was music here? Would it be either? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> weird or normal. There you go. Um, I definitely go in the weird category. And your music stretches across, I think, a lot of different it, genres. It does, yeah. yeah. Actually, I was thinking about that. I'm working on it. I'm always working on new material mm. just constantly. There's a huge um, song bank of unreleased material and and currently working material and, and whatnot. And, um, but I'm working on a song right now and it's, it's a total throwback and not on purpose. It just happened. It's just, I just started doing something and then I'm like, okay, cool. We're yeah. just going to go down with this. And it's a complete throwback to almost like nineties. Yeah. Alanis Morissette meets Beck. Oh, cool. Yeah. All right. So it's like, it's, it's nothing like anything that's nice. out even. So it's like a totally new direction. Yeah. But that's what it's about. It's about, it's art. Yeah. There's no rules. There's no walls. Which is great, right? Yeah, exactly. And I love that, that that's, you know, some of that 90s sound is coming back just being a 90s kid myself. Mm, so. Yeah, man. I love yeah. that stuff. I know. I, I flipped on um, for reference just to hear like what sonically those records sound like and, mm-hmm. and the production and stuff. And it was like I threw on Alanis Morissette and Dido. You remember Dido? Oh, vaguely. Yeah, she had that song, Thank You. Okay. <laughs> anyway, you would recognize you heard. Right, it was yeah. like a big hit. Okay. And I was like, oh, and I hadn't listened to those one songs. One Hit Wonder, it must have been? Is it? She was kind okay. of a one hit wonder. I okay. mean, that was her, like, a monster hit. She never really had she has other good songs. Yeah, yeah, she had other great songs, and she totally was, like, a working, touring yeah. artist. But, like, that song was, like, you know, the stratosphere. Yep. So, so, yeah, so I go back and listen. I hadn't listened to that music in forever, and I was like, oh, this is cool. Yeah, nice. I forgot. I love the 90s, man. Yeah. It was just, like, good, honest music. You're right. Oh, yeah. And yeah. it was good rock, and it was good to hear the guitars in it. Yeah, exactly. It was nice and clean. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Then the totally. Two, yeah, then the 2000s hit. Yeah, but I don't, well, I don't really, and so I don't really believe in genres, and I don't think you have to. I think it, it's kind of shooting yourself in the foot if you're mm-hmm. doing that these days, because the music biz and the music scene is such a DIY world where we have the power, we can release and we can do whatever we want. Mm-hmm. We don't have these executives being like, well, that doesn't sound like this and it doesn't sound like that. How am I going to sell it? Those people are like, <laughs> the biz is just dead, so it doesn't mm-hmm. matter. So I might as well do whatever you want. That's right. Be as ex- you know, explore as much ground as you want. Yeah, because it's fun. much lower risk, which I think yeah. is what I believe a lot of the tr- true fans or these the fans that follow that music would prefer to have. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, because a lot of it gets fed to them. It know? does, yeah. especially with like, you know, the Spotify algorithms and things that are just built into yeah. these playlists that are just presented. And that's cool. I mean, sometimes I don't want to, what am I going to listen to today? I don't know. Just I'm going to listen to 80s rock and just yeah. throw it on. You know? Just let it happen. And just let it happen. I don't have to think about it. You well, know? And then something comes on. I'm like, oh yeah, I love that song. You well, know? That's why I, just, I listen to KUTX all day. And it KUTX the is problem. the greatest radio station <laughs> on the planet. I love that's that right. station. Yeah. I do. I do have a hard time streaming to something else than yeah. sticking with KUTX. But um, another thing that came up when I was talking with the Fair City Fire guys who were on mm-hmm. recently. And we were talking about... Um, Nowadays, in the whole DIY artist, do you come out with one song at a time and slowly release it because sure. you feel you got to produce, or do you wait and build out the album, right? Because it used to be the album was a story in itself. Right. What's your opinion on it? Do you do one song or do you do the album? I actually don't really, yeah, I don't really enjoy doing one song things mm. um, because I'm up, like, again, I think it goes back to just having that song bank mm-hmm. that I just always have a collection of songs. So, um, I want that collection to go out. I, I really, I really, my perspective on just recorded music, it's just a, it's just a temporary um, photograph of what you're working on at the time. Mm-hmm. It's always going to change, and you can sit there in the yeah. studio and re-record that song for 40 years, yeah. and it'll never, it can always be something different or something better, if that's what you want to call it. Yeah. So why not just be okay with, you have this collection of songs, well, let's send that out. Okay, well, let's work on this collection of songs, let's send that out. Right. Instead of just sitting and just doting on one tune, I don't know, that's just like, I don't have time to do that. Yeah. I got too many songs to put out. There's probably so much going on in your head. <laughs> yeah, you I just too much in my head. head. I need to right. get it out, yeah. Yeah, I know, I'm, I'm a fan of the whole day, the album. I love the album. Right, when you can put that together, yeah. I think it's great. Yeah, yeah. So, speaking of the album, can we hear another song? Yeah, let's do another All right. This, uh, actually, is, I love this song. I don't know if anyone else loves it, but... It doesn't okay. matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> but um, this is my favorite, one of my favorite songs because I wrote this when I... So I moved around a lot. I lived in all over the country or whatever. And I moved back to Texas five years ago. When I moved back, I really felt this kind of coming around circle of of reconnecting with my family who I had been away from for like 15 years. And it's like, but not, it took going away to really realize how important that stuff was. And I think this is a cool song right now because they're all in Houston, you know. Yeah. Rowing those oars. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, everyone's family is. So this is for everyone's family in, in Houston, you know. Nice. It's called Afternoon Novelas.
Very positive. It's um, yeah. it's inspiring, right? I hope. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's encouraging, inspiring, and that's what I love about the, the album. Right, the album is very positive. So sure thing. One of my follow up question to that or lead into that: um, if you could um, kill somebody in the most ridiculous way possible, how would you do it? You really want to ask me that? I question. really want to know. Our viewers want to know. Yeah. They they do. They want to know. The police want to know. <laughs> the police are looking for me right now. Uh -huh. Maybe just in the most ridiculous way you could think when of. I, How would you do it? When, so when I, when I worked, when I first moved to Austin, I used to work at this place called Snack Bar. It was on South Congress. Yeah. And ironically enough, I live behind it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's like I can't escape the energy of that block, which is great. Though. It's fine. I love living there. But, um, um, but Snack Bar was like a, a, to me, my take on Snack Bar was like, it was like the, you know, Austin's changing so much, and all these modern cities are gentrifying and this and that, and whatever. Yeah. That's the, who cares about that conversation? But it's kind of just inevitable. Time out. <laughs> it kicked us off again. What? Oh. Huh. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with that. I wish it could I, do it consistently so we could figure it off. Yeah, it's, it's about to delayed. stop. Let's do a quick reboot. I still hear it. Let's, yeah, jump back in. Oh, live video interrupted? Yep. There we go. They were a couple seconds behind on the live video. They didn't want yeah. me to tell how I'm going to kill someone. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're like, oh, I know what it's going to be. We should have you in handcuffs. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's going to be like, he asks yeah. everybody that, and they're going to look. <laughs> yeah. Good. <laughs> That's still connecting to it. He said, he texted me earlier, he's like, Donald Trump's here. 
or something. And I said, let's, um, what did I say? Oh, He's like, let's kill him. I'm going to kill him. Wait, that's why it interrupted. Yeah, yeah I, I said yeah. something like, let's, let's, um. Hey, well, it's DIY. And so we're going to run into a few technical difficulties. I hope that a few of you stuck around. And if not, if you're watching this recorded later, you would have enjoyed that nice uh, technical interlude in yeah. the two sets. <laughs> and I was just asking Nick a very important question um, that a lot of viewers uh, want me to ask of our artists, and that is, you know, how would you kill somebody in the most ridiculous <laughs> way? And Nick was explaining how he um, lived behind a snack bar on South Congress, and I'll let you continue the yeah. story. Yeah. Well, so, well, yeah, so, yeah, so less, whatever, snack bar to me was this last bit of, of like punk rock attitude on South Congress. Yeah. It's all gone. That those places, yeah. places like that don't you know, there was like Wahoos, there was that. There was all kinds of yeah, things. Yeah. And um and so I that's the only job I ever had in Austin um before being a full time musician and I and I love the people from there. They're, they were totally like family and there were just a bunch of ragtag vagabonds. Yeah. So actually one question I would always ask if I would say they're all dead. What would, they're all dead. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing I said was like what would you got? What would be the first weapon you would grab if someone were to come in and rob us? And so someone would be like, "Oh, I grab a you know a, a saute pan, or I grab a knife, <laughs> or whatever." This somebody was like, "I'll grab a coat rack because we had this coat rack that Jack White had bought for us because he came and he didn't have anywhere to hang his coat. Oh, cool. So he went out and bought a coat rack for the cafe. Nice. And so, so but we used to the bane of my existence for four years. We had to strike down and put up the patio chairs in and outside, and the, and the patio was humongous. Yeah, it was big. so we had Pretty to like tall. and heavy, so pick chairs up, sort of, and then we had to like tie one of those steel cable things through it so nobody could steal chairs at night. Yeah, I would grab that steel thing, whip someone in the face <laughs> until they died. That's what I would do. That'd be so ridiculous. I go find that today and still uh -huh. use that as weapon of choice. Carrying around your chains. <laughs> it's uh -huh. not a chain though, but it was one of those like rubber ones. So yeah. It's even worse. Yeah. It just like slash the skin. <laughs> Is that weird? Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of ridiculous. That's good though. You asked. Right? Asked. Uh -huh. You asked. No, no, no. Was, they, they, we did talk. Of, yeah, I'm not going to mention two words because they're going to cut off our internet again. Uh, <laughs> Facebook cut us off further because they didn't want to hear me say how I was going to kill someone. Yeah, that's right. Because we know who's in town. Yeah. So it could be dangerous. And you Wait, that's the CIA knocking on the door line. <laughs> you mentioned that you've lived around, you've moved around quite a few different places, right? New York and uh, New Orleans, mm -hmm. up to Houston, San Francisco. Mm -hmm. So, um, what's different about the fans in each of those places? And then, you know, why, why, why in Austin now? Why so here? Right um, well, when I set off on that kind of trajectory, um, I was studying and, and learning music. Um, and I really wanted to <clears throat> visit the places where music was born in America. You know, it's New Orleans is rag, yeah. ragtime, traditional jazz and funk music. And then um, New York City has this deep history of punk rock and pop songwriting and, you know, all kinds. Of, and then the biz is there. So, you mm -hmm. know, tons of stuff to really soak in there. And then San Francisco also, you know, the 60s band, you know, uh, just like the Dead and Santana and Jefferson Airplane. Janice spent a lot of time out there. Um, and, and there's a huge Bay Area funk scene, you know, Sly Stone and stuff like that. And then I'm from Texas, so it's Texas blues has just it's always been in my blood. Yeah. Um, anyways, and it's, it's, it's what I grew up studying. So, so anyways, going to those places and, and, mm -hmm. and I mean, sure you can study music in a book or on a CD, but like if you can go to the place and breathe the air See how the air, how the sun comes up and down every day. Mm -hmm. Drink a beer at the bar where they used to play. You know, walk by the house they used to live in. It's like that's a deeper way to soak music in. Yeah. And and I just I just really wanted to do it that way. Yeah. So so why Austin is because it just kind of comes back full circle of being a, you know, growing up as a Texas blues rock and roll guitar player. The bands that came out of Austin, the Archangels and Ian Moore and the Bond Brothers and. You know, Charlie and Will Sexton, Will, Willie Nelson, of course, um, um, just all that music was music I grew up listening to mm -hmm. as a kid, so I always knew I would end up here um, at some point, and, and life just moved on, and then it was time to come back home, so mm -hmm. this is the place that I chose to, to land when I came back home. Yeah. And stuff. Funny enough, too, and then it's like, um, 
to land playing guitar for a Texas icon too because I do part time work with Alejandro Escovedo, mm -hmm. so that's cool too. So I get to really soak it up next to people that, yeah. that of this music that I used to, you know, I used to be in like awe of it. I mean, you see like these record covers right here as a kid when you would start playing music and you, I mean, you'd stare at these. I would stare at these records and just be like, how do you yeah. become that? How do you? How does that sound happen? How does any of that happen? Yeah. And I mean, really, it just comes from living life. And just doing it, mm -hmm. and you so. can you taught yourself to play, right? Yeah, so that's just, it seems right. to be part of your just theme <clears throat> and you're going through it is that immersion, right? And mm -hmm. you're really absorbing it, right? And yeah, just learning the guitar from a young age, right? You've played for 25 years or so now, yeah, about, right? yeah. Mm -hmm. And so to get to this point where you know you're probably the you know, so the musician's musician, right? Where you really absorb it, you appreciate it, you taught totally. yourself. And now you're playing with Alejandro. Mm -hmm. um, and what's that been like touring with him a few times? And yeah, it's great. I mean, it's awesome. The um, the music is super cool. And and funny enough, I see a lot of what I do and what what he's done just by chance because he he his his path also was San Francisco, New York, Austin, and now he's in Dallas. But mm -hmm. you know, he he ran around and, and was doing stuff like that too. And uh, my my favorite part is is sitting next to him, and he he's an incredible storyteller. So to like. Yeah. Sit next to him on stage, and then you know we play like a few songs, and then you know he he breaks down, he talks to the audience, and he just starts telling stories about mm -hmm. the story he told when I was with him in June was just about becoming a musician, and in Austin in the seventies, and mm -hmm. you know I mean he would say, you know, just like earlier when I was talking, like oh you know like Jeff Olson is running around, or Mike Sinclair is around, or this guy's around, like I mean yeah. and. And I think we are the, just the younger wave of guys doing it, but it's like, we all know the names that he says. He's like, well, Willie was playing at the hole in the wall and Lucinda was on the corner of, yeah. you know, of, the, of the drag bus game. Yeah. The Vaughn brothers were playing Sunday nights at some dingy blues club. And it's, great, yeah. yeah, it's just, it's just a, it was just, we know those names because, you know, those are, te that's Texas music history. Um, but it's it's no different. You know, Austin has always been a rich place to play music. Yeah. I mean, that's another draw to it. So, but it's great. It's great playing with him. And I mean, he's been on the road for forty years. That's kind of like the next step of learning is just being able to be around people like that. For yeah, me, that absorbs know, it. But I think, it. and you probably um, at least you were. He was attracted to you, I guess, in a sense, probably because you you do absorb things quickly, right? You pick things up. I, I would imagine. I, I walked into his gig with no rehearsal and no, and he just sent me songs. I had to learn like twenty songs, and I just did it and just showed up and wow. did it. So I'm sure he probably liked that. I don't yeah, know. yeah. Maybe he did. I don't know. All right, can we rehearse with this guy. Yeah. All right, all right. We're on. This guy just shows up. And he knows it. Cool. Yeah, that's right. And now you're you got some shows coming up here soon, right? So, yeah, we're, we're, we're September eighth. September eighth, the Thread Gills, um, with the full band, and then um, it was the twenty eighth, I think, the twenty eighth, the twenty eighth of um, yeah, um, September. September. Yes, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Same month. Well, Looking at the television producer. He's got <laughs> he's got the the cue cards back yeah, there. Yeah, we're heard about Ben on this side. This right. Side. <laughs> um, yeah, the 28th of September at Kebabalicious, um, a good friend of mine actually who shot those new photos, mm. um, Letitia from White Light Exposure, she's an incredible photographer, and then she runs nights like this at Kebabalicious, um, okay. you know, hosting local bands, and, and uh, she does great things for the community. I sent, out, I sent out a newsletter, that, we have a Buenos Dias newsletter, yeah. which if you'd like, just email us at buenosdiasmusic at yahoo.com. Um, yes, and um, and get on it because it's kind of fun. I tell stories like this in it, but I gave her a, a lovely shout out because she deserves it, and she mm -hmm. and I love those photos she did. But yeah, she does awesome things for the community, um, and, and artistically with her photos and and the music series that she runs and um, and other things that she does. I think she runs like a she runs a book publishing company. Oh wow, for cookbooks. I think it's cookbooks. Isn't it Sorry, cool? I forget. I think it's cool books, right? <laughs> That's right. We can give a nice shout out for that. And the yeah. photos were great. Yeah. You know, as I've commented, they're through, awesome. Yeah, yeah, they're really good. They're really good. And well, as our viewers know, you're a very attractive man. I mean, we know this. I think you're yes, you're one of Austin's most sexiest men here soon. Um, <laughs> so now is the time to book him for your own private show. Yeah. You have to do a private show. Hey, I'll play without my shirt on. That's right. <laughs> That's pretty hot. So, um, so we know that. And I know a lot of our viewers, they do like the drama. They want to know, um, who are you sleeping with nowadays? Is it serious? What's going on? How do you answer that question? Honestly. Honestly. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. You want, hey, you want to move into a couple songs? 
No, I want to answer that. You want to answer that? Okay. Good, <laughs> because right. they want to know. We know you want to know. She might be on her way, but I'm, I'm not going to say her name. See, that's true, because yeah. she may not make it here alive. Yeah. Because our viewers are no. Hopefully she won't watch that. I don't know. She might slap me. All right. So, so you're a serious relationship. Are you dating now? And... Oh, I, I don't know. Oh, oh, all right. She's turning around. <laughs> She's at the door. She's just like, I'm out of here. Uh, I'm spending quality time with someone. All right. That's good. And it's been lovely. Okay. We're just seeing where it goes. All right. Yeah. Well, that's fair. We're being very adult about it. I'm like the biggest non-adult adult. <laughs> good for you. <laughs> so. All right. Let's move into a couple more songs. How's that? All right. All right. Oh, all right. We're breaking out the election. Yeah. Great. Yeah, I think I know how to use this thing. Oh, my ass is gonna blow up! I'm just kidding. <laughs> that would be a ridiculous way to die. That would be a ridiculous way to die. Mm -hmm. Hit a pedal button and it just boom. <laughs> Thank you. 
nice to get the electric guitar back out. Like the Nick that I know. This is the Nick that everyone knows. The acoustic was cute and all, but it's, that's the Nick that I know. <laughs> <laughs> and acoustic was cute, wasn't it? Yeah, it was it's cute. cute. It was fun. And you know, now that I know who you're sleeping with, it was nice to go into love and sanity. It was just all this. That just played really well for everybody here. Well, it did work its way into there, didn't it? It did yeah. somehow. Yeah. Um, and I want to ask you, uh, I do want to hear one more song before we close out. Mm -hmm. you know, we've got about 10 minutes. Is there left. a song you would like to hear? Um, no, but I know there are members of our audience. <laughs> There's not a single song I want to hear anymore because you did pull out that acoustic crap. Um, I'm just kidding. Wow. <laughs> I'm with you on that, man. I know. That's why I never do stuff. it. Um, but we do have a lot of members in our studio audience. And if you would like to attend one of our shows, please reach out to us because um, we get to eat dinner afterwards and hang out. So I, I'm going to take a recommendation in a second from our studio audience. You already asked me how people can get an autographed copy. How? Well, there, there better be damn tacos involved. There are tacos. Because there's tacos involved here, and that's why I'm here. That's tacos, true. So. The only reason he came is because yeah. it's Taco Tuesday here on yeah. our live streaming um, show. Um, and if you want to ask a question, if you're online uh, now, send us a question. They'll send it directly to me, and I'll, I'll ask it. This also comes back around, too, because it is Taco Tuesday. And when I lived in Brooklyn, some of my best friends live in New York that I knew from um, New Orleans, and we used to have a Taco Tuesday. Yeah. And the name Buenos Dias originates from Taco Tuesday. Oh. From hanging out and just being silly and that's and things. great. So. Yeah. I love it. Taco Tuesday, appropriate. I yeah, I, love, I almost didn't ask that question. I got that's really a lame question, but that's a great answer. And there it is. <laughs> you didn't even have to ask it. It asked itself. My wife and I's first date was on a Taco Tuesday. There you go. I met her in the morning, and then I went all to do the Taco Tuesday that evening. There's all kinds of things that happen on Taco Tuesday. That's right. You gotta watch out. That's right. Yeah. So if you ever want to get invited to Taco Tuesday here, let me ask. I got a serious question, then I want to ask a couple more fun ones, and then let's finish up with a song. How's that? What's you're a DIY musician? We talked about earlier. You don't you don't have the fancy label that comes in and does your makeup and hair, you know, before every show and tells you what to think. And no, say. I make myself look like this. <laughs> That's why you're the most attractive man <laughs> in Texas. <laughs> oh, I I've been wanting to do this. Oh, this I guess it's got to happen at least once. We're in Texas, and I never wear cowboy hats, yeah. but this is just calling my name. Yeah, I know, right? This I knew that's why I put yeah. it right there. You knew you're doing. Uh -huh. hey, can we like take a look, look at all this fabulous stuff on this show? I, know. I mean, like. Austin, the chicken head has really got me sold. I'm gonna punch Noah with that later. <laughs> yeah, this is great. Look, there's a Walkman. I know, an old school Walkman. I thought if, wow. you, if, you, if you would have brought your tapes. Oh. I know. Well done. That's right. All right. It is Austin. It is Austin. So, what is a day in a life for you as a DIY musician? Like, you get up. We were talking earlier Getting about is a struggle. about drinking. We we're talking about right because yeah. we're surrounded with alcohol and that sort of stuff a lot, which is. You know, not a good thing because obviously it slows you down and it's it just tough to get going. And what's, what's a day in the life like for you? Well, a, nor well, a normal day. Um, I mean, I just, you know, it's it's just, it's work, man. You know, yeah. it's like it's a full time job. It's a full time job more than a job because because it's your passion and, and you love it. So yeah. there's no there's no clock out ever. Zero clock out yeah. from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to sleep. Especially being the creative brain too. Um, because on top of like going through, um, whatever booking gigs and organizing rehearsals and my band and, um, and then communicating with you and yeah. on things like this and making sure, you know, my schedule can handle those things. Yeah. Um, and also, you know, I, I mean, I'm, pff, there's zero help. So, I mean, I reach out to press, all the press that's been written about this band is because I'm actively reaching out to papers mm -hmm. and radio and whatnot and just yeah. making it happen um but you have to i mean there's a dime a dozen guitar players in austin probably mm -hmm. a ton better than me even out there and it's like mm -hmm. you got to do the things that set you apart and being organized and professional is a huge part of that yeah. um so i mean my day like yeah a normal day like, wake up i have my zen ri ritual you know like i was in india in in january so um, and I don't know if we ever actually caught up about that. No, yet. no. After your trip, we, t we talked about it a little bit, but yeah. no, I didn't get to hear the yeah. whole story. Yeah. Another and for another interview for yes. them. I'll we'll tell you. About it. I'll tell you yeah. about it over tacos. All right. Um, but see, um, if you were here, you would know about the yeah. story. Yeah. <laughs> see, see all the things that can happen when you bring tacos into the mix. <laughs> but um, I uh, yeah, I just like to really like, take my time waking up, just have a clear head. So you know, just like yeah. listen to really quiet, you know, just Zen music and mm. um, and just kind of relax into the day. And then 
get into, it depends on what I'm working on, either working on songs or working on like figuring out more sonic palette with this organ of instruments at my feet. There's all these pedals down here mm -hmm. um, to whether I'm just handling booking things and emails or organizing the rehearsal or going to a rehearsal or going to a gig that day. And then, you know, so that's a few hours Then eat some lunch, go exercise, take a nap because my days also extend to two, three in the morning, yep. four in the morning because of shows and going to shows because I'm also just actively supporting everyone in this community as much as I can too. I just love being a part of it. So I yeah. want to be there. So, um, you know, so taking that, that nap is crucial. That siesta, that siesta is in my blood though. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so, and then after I wake up from nap and it's like, do it all again. And it's like either I'm writing or emails or going to a gig or a rehearsal and then either if it's a show that I'm performing at, well, then I go do that and then I hang out mm -hmm. just to be meeting everyone and, you know, make sure they're coming back to the shows later. Or I'm going to see a show, a friend show or, yeah, or a new band somewhere. that I haven't heard of and I'm like, you should go check this out. Or, yeah, it's, or a new venue that just opened and I'm like, I need to know about it or whatever. So there's, it's just endless. Yeah. You know, it's just It doesn't endless. stop. It's not a nine to five. You get to come home and watch your favorite sitcom and then that's, yeah. that's the night. I don't yeah. watch television. And I think a, a lot of casual fans may, don't really realize that. No, right? they, think, they don't. Wow, that's okay. Really it's yeah. like, you know, what do, you, what, do, what do any of us really know about what's going on behind the scenes in anyone's of profession? Like, that's right. You know, there's, there's always so much more than we know just on the surface. And that's, I think, probably a little deeper of a truth in, in music yeah. just because of the nature of, of it becoming such a DIY world these days. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I, I, I get to... It's been an interesting experience for me just getting close to a lot of musicians over the past couple of years or year and a half that I've been working with them. And I've, I've really been impressed and surprised by how hard sure. working. Um, and so and if, if you're watching tonight, like if you want to book Nick for um, a house concert or if you're in a small business or something, right, it's booking at Buenos, Buenos Dias. Buenos Dias music. music. And that's D-I-A-Z, not D-I-A-S. Yeah. Yeah, so it's great, and uh, would be Nick is fantastic for a house show, right? If you you're planning that, fall's coming. A lot of people are putting, you know, because house concerts, especially in Austin, are like an entire subculture. They really are. We were just yeah. at one. My my friend Larissa and I were just at one last yeah. night with Will. With Will, that's right. You know Will. Yeah, I know okay. Will. Yep. I, I just met him yesterday. But yeah, he's fantastic, yeah. incredible musician. Funny enough, yeah. uh, uh, Bob Livingston was performing. Do you know who he is? Uh, I know the name, but I have no. Yeah, that's how I was too. I guess he played with like Jerry Jeff and mm -hmm. all these. You know the Ray Wiley Hubbards of the Texas Cow yeah. the original Texas yeah. Cosmic Cowboys. Yep, he's part of that hang. Actually, and my friend, one of the guys, old guys from Snack Bar, he tried to connect me with Bob when I was in India because Bob was okay. there. Our timing wasn't quite right. Yeah, but that's how I first heard his name. Okay. But uh, Kevin calls him, he's one of the original Gonzos, or the leftover Gonzos, wow. which is like, that was um, which is Hunter S. Thompson. Incredible, yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, one of the yeah. Greatest he was great, though. It was fun to watch him. Wouldn't he be great to be alive right now in, the, in this whole Trump thing? But that's a side, mm -hmm. man. All right. I I'm, I'm going to go off I'm going to have to think about but that. But that's a good like, one. That's Thompson gonna be today good. With, with Trump yeah. um, would be, would be great. Right. But I, I know I, I want to save a few more minutes, too. <laughs> Let's we get one more song, sure. and then we'll close up from there. Yes, we can. All right, let's do it. <laughs> you might, you, I might walk out with that pink hat. You might watch out. We'll get more. I'm going to knock down something on this shelf, aren't I? Yeah, nice work. Okay. Oh, did someone want to hear something? Is that what we Can said? Give me a request, yeah. Three, three, four. Oh, good Ooh, one. That's a weird one. <laughs> Play your favorite song. Without the full band. All the better. You can do whatever you want. I know I can do whatever I yeah. want. <laughs> Oh, this is, oh, I'm going to do this. It's cool. It's like a live challenge. I, I only play this song with my full band, so I'm going to rearrange furniture in my head real quick. It might 
not seem like much But get ready to do it again One, two, three, four La, 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 love Yeah, yeah La, la, love One, two, three, four La, 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 love La, la, love Nick, thanks for coming on the show tonight. Yeah, thanks man, for having me. It was me. a good time. Appreciate it. It was a great time. Thank you. I loved it. Yeah, thanks, man. Thanks for everybody who tuned in tonight. If you're watching later, please like and share. That is really the currency that keeps it going. Um, our great sound engineer and video guy does everything for us, um, keeps track of dates and calendars. Uh, Benjamin Allen Levy. Um, and if you're a musician looking to get anything produced, please reach out to Ben. My wife, Claudia, running social tonight. We had a packed house with a live studio audience. Huge, huge, biggest audience you've ever seen. Fantastic. Come on, people out there. Man. Yes, it's it huge. Really yes. nervous. Yes. <laughs> so thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Um, huge thanks to our sponsor, New Standard Manufacturing. Um, if you need any apparel made, please reach out to Larissa Robinson. Fantastic company. Absolutely. So please reach out to them. These are really soft. I'm going to be sleeping in this tonight. So, hey, thanks, everybody. We'll see you next week. Uh, next week we have um, Scott Collins. So tune in, Scott Collins Project. If you haven't seen Scott, you're going to be impressed. Love this guy. Tune in next week, Tuesday, 7 p.m. Central Time. Thank you. See you guys.